Okay, it's recording. Um, oh, I need to make the uh, sign-in sheet. I will do that once Anna gets started and I'll put it in the chat. Um, for those of you that haven't met Anna virtually, Anna works for SMART and she's gonna help us with some Lumio stuff today. Um, we did a session a couple weeks ago with Lumio specifically for like elementary, but I think no matter like, we have some folks from all over um, the district on today, you'll you'll find this very beneficial. So. Um, Anna, welcome back. We're glad to have you and I, I'll turn it over to you and um, thanks for presenting for us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So yes, like um, we said, my name is Anna and I work for SMART. However, prior to that, I was a teacher for 11 years. I was um, mostly special ed in the secondary classroom and then also did a little stint in elementary. And my email address is at the bottom of the screen, atansy at smarttech.com. If you're working through um, using this platform and you come into a question or need uh, any sort of help, please feel free to reach out to me. All right, so just a quick overview. What is Lumio? Lumio is a web-based platform that makes learning very engaging and fun. Um, so essentially, you can take the lessons that you already have in the form of PowerPoint slides, Google slides, PDFs, old notebook files. You can fuse them all together and then add on layers of engagement in the form of game-based uh, learning, formative assessment, YouTube videos, Desmos graphing calculator, lots of really good stuff. And then deliver it to students either via their Chromebooks or if you have a smart panel in your room, you can deliver them from your panel without even having to connect a computer. So Lumio is super powerful and we're going to just go over the basics today. I'm going to build a lesson in front of you guys and then you can join as students to kind of get the student experience. And then as we go, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to come off of mute and just ask those questions out loud. So these are some of the things that I quickly talked about um, that you can do with Lumio. We like to call it the one tab wonder because there are so many things built into Lumio that you don't have to go to these secondary websites to um, add on that engagement. And especially for secondary, because they are so fluent on the computer, this platform is really great for them because they're gonna be able to navigate it no problem. So whether you are doing this for note taking or you are doing it as a whole class um, lesson, or maybe you want to share out uh, notes in your Google Classroom after the lesson is over, you can really do all of those things from Lumio. All right, and then this is just our, our Lumio logic model. So a lot of the activities that Lumio has to offer are deeply rooted in best practices and pedagogy. Um, again, you're really gonna increase engagement. You're gonna get those Chromebooks off the sideline in a more targeted and explicit way. Um, Lumio allows for really nice student collaboration. So in the secondary classroom, a lot of times when we get students uh, on their Chromebooks, they get their blinders on, right? And their device elation happens. Um, with Lumio, they have the ability to collaborate and really simulate that real world learning that, that they would eventually do down the road in college or at a, at a job. So that logic model just kind of lays all that out for you. And then after today, as you're working your way through this and maybe diving a little deeper into the platform um, and want to learn more, we do have our Lumio Academy. And if you just Google Lumio Academy, it will pop up. These are little courses that you can work through at your leisure. They're self-paced, again, very rooted in pedagogy. You could probably submit them for continuing education hours because they are very aligned to best practices. And you can work through the getting started level one um, how to lumify your curriculum. Okay. All right. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson. And we are going to start right here on the Lumio homepage. Um, if I sign into Lumio, uh, your little picture will appear in the top um, right hand corner. And um, you sign in with your school Google credentials. And then anything that you do um, from your whiteboard uh, on your smart panel, those lessons will appear here and vice versa. Anything that you do in Lumio will also appear on your smart panel under the files library. So again, you can launch those Lumio lessons right from your panel without having to even hook up a computer. 
Um, so we're going to start again. I, as a teacher, had stuff all over the place. A lot of my content lived in my Google Drive. So I'm going to start in my Google Drive with something that I already have. Um, these slides here, I'm going to right click on them and open with Lumio. And that imports those slides right into this platform. So it's going to just load for a second, depending on how large or small your document is, it could take a minute or two to import uh, the files. But then I'll be in what's kind of known as like an editing mode where I can build my lesson and add on to make it more engaging. So here's my slides. They just popped up. I'm going to select or deselect the ones that I want to add. And then you'll see here in a second, we're going to be in editing mode. Right off the bat, I like to change my title um, to call it my master copy. So I'm going to call this Landmarks Master Copy. And I do that because with Lumio, um, especially as a secondary teacher, and you're teaching to multiple periods, multiple groups of students, you'll want to make copies of each of your lessons so that all the data can save for that group of students to that file. And then you just keep making copies of your, of your master copy. Um, and then you can go back and have a digital learning artifact for first period, second period, third period, and so on. All right, so now I'm going to kind of talk through some of the tools here at the top. You've got a pen tool, and these will look very similar for students. Um, you've got an eraser, you have a text box tool. So if I wanted to quickly add the date of this lesson um, for two, gosh, can you believe it's already April, bananas. So I can put the date there. Um, I also have this math and chem type. So for my science or math teachers, you have unique symbols and equations that you can um, type into our equation editor. And then this heart plus sign will give you access to shapes, lines. You can pull in pictures off the web. So maybe I want to pull in the Liberty Bell. Uh, I can quickly do a search for that and then slide some pictures onto this page. Okay, I can resize. And then anything in Lumio can become a digital manipulative by using this drop down arrow and turning on a, a feature called infinite cloner. If you remember notebook, um, I can keep pulling my bells here and there will always be another one behind the one that I pull. Okay, that page looks good. I'm gonna move on to our lesson objective page. Um, maybe I want uh, to share this this lesson out to students in my Google Classroom for maybe those people who are absent or who want to have a copy of this lesson um, just as a reference. Uh, this page, I don't need to do a whole lot with. I'm going to read the lesson objective and record myself using our record feature. So this little talking head here um, gives me five minutes of recorded audio per page. So if I needed to read aloud directions, maybe provide some translations, for ESL students, or if I was a, a foreign language teacher, I can do that with this tool here. So I'll just hit start recording. Hi students, this lesson is all about landmarks in the United States. And I'm gonna hit add. And now I have my black box here with the blue head indicates that I have audio on that page. So maybe you're needing to provide read aloud or verbal directions just because you don't want to be asked 20 times, what do I do here? Um, that button is a really nice feature. All right. The next thing we can do here in Lumio is add videos. So I'm going to hit the plus sign in the bottom left hand corner and I'm going to bring in a YouTube video. I like to add YouTube videos in Lumio because... Um, it gives me, sorry, not for kindergartners. Let's see, just wanted to do for kids. Um, the video feature um, pulls in videos from YouTube without any ads or pop-ups. So you don't have to lose any uh, teaching time watching the Grammarly video or the State Farm commercial uh, 10 times. So I'm just gonna pull in one of these videos. I'm gonna hit add. 
And now um, this video is its own page in our slide deck. So you guys can see there was our title page. There was our objective page. This one was just a static teaching page. And now we have a video. Okay. All right. This page has us just exploring some famous landmarks in America. Um, and I'm just presenting it in kind of a sit and get lecture slide format. Now I want students to do something with this. So I really, really like Lumio for checking in with students and giving them the opportunity to spit back the information that they're hearing, right? We know that students, when they're using the visual, the audio, all that kinesthetic learning is really solidifying that learning in their brain. So let me hit the add button again. So that plus sign brings us back to this page. And I'm going to do a game-based activity. So game-based activities are so great for learning. Again, slide, slide, check for understanding, slide, slide, opportunity for response. It just is going to keep the engagement really high. So there are 12 different game-based templates here, um, anywhere from something as simple as filling in the blanks for vocabulary. Maybe you're you know, working on some vocabulary words, or maybe you're studying the preamble of the Constitution and you want students to memorize um something so this is just putting vocabulary into a, a paragraph flip it out is going to be flashcards so improving recall um, or again vocabulary or maybe you set it up as a choice board game show is a great way to review for a test students split up into monsters versus aliens they spin the wheel and then they have to answer a question for points Label reveal, love this one for graphic images. So this is parts of the cell and they just have to click to reveal um, the different parts of the cell. Maybe it's parts of a plant, maybe it's the periodic table, maybe it's parts of an equation for um, math. You guys get to put the Im images in there and then add on those uh, labels. We're gonna make a game called, uh, let's see here, we're gonna do match them up. So again, I'm going to show you how I would create a game. I'm going to put the landmark on the left-hand side and then the city slash state that we would find it in on the right-hand side. So we're going to do the Liberty Bell, and that would be Philadelphia, uh, Statue of Liberty, NYC, Grand Canyon, Arizona, I think. Um, Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco. Okay. No. San Fran. I'm just going to put that. All right. So I can either choose to do um, words or I can also do images if I wanted to make this more visual. We could do Golden Gate Bridge and pull in uh, a, the picture of the bridge off of our Bing safe search. So then they would be matching the picture to the city. I can also choose when I want uh, students to be checked. Do I want that instant feedback right away? Or maybe I want them to work through the whole entire game and to be prompted at the end for, uh, for the results. I'm going to hit next. I get to choose a fun background. Again, maybe for secondary, we keep it simple and just choose like a neutral orange. And then I can hit finish. And now I have my game. So I can preview it and take a look. Does it look how I want it to? Yes, this looks great. Awesome. We're going to move on. All right. The next page here is a visual of Washington, D.C., um, showing all the different landmarks. And students are going to use their pen tool to circle the Capitol, the National Mall, all those good ones. So they would just put a circle around here and find all those different landmarks in D.C. But I want them to do this independently. And I want it to be a digital handout for everybody to do on their own. So I'm going to use this magic wand tool to make this page an individual handout so that each student has their own copy as if I were handing it out paper pencil. So we can do that with any um, we can do that with any of these pages here. So maybe for this one, they're using their pen tool. Sorry about that. They're using their pen tool to match up the uh, the Statue of Liberty to the name here. But this one, I want students to work with partners. Um, so I can use that same magic wand tool to convert this page to a group workspace. So now they would be working in teams or pairs to complete this activity um, together. All right. 
Next one here we have is um, something called cultural significance. And after we talk about cultural significance, I want students to complete a graphic organizer. So I'm going to hit that plus sign again, and we're going to look at all these different graphic organizers that I have here. Um, these should look familiar because they're also in your whiteboard on your interactive flat panel. So I can make any of these graphic organizers um, personalized or, or uh, customized here by adding some text with my text box. So I'm going to change my font size and we're going to be talking about cultural significance of landmarks. And then we're going to fill in um, these spaces. Maybe we want to talk about the um, uh, geographic significance. Maybe we're talking about the economic significance. And then maybe we're talking about, I don't know, I'm just going off the top of my brain here, maybe social significance. And then students have to fill in the green boxes at the bottom. Again, maybe I want them for this one to work on this, again, with a partner or in a group. So I'm going to make this particular uh, graphic organizer a group workspace. All right. This is looking pretty good. I can move any of these pages around. So if I needed to adjust them and kind of move them, I can do that. I'm gonna hit the plus sign one more time. I wanna bring in something that I've already created from my Lumio library. So a pre-existing uh, activity that I've already set up. So I'm gonna go into my personal library and I'm gonna search for landmarks. And this little monster quiz is something that I wanted to add but not make in front of you because we're going to test it out together. So that'll be right at the end to kind of wrap up this lesson. Oh, you know what? I think I want to do a quick brainstorm. Um, I'm going to add in a shout it out. So shout it out is another good uh, activity for whole class uh, idea generating. So maybe a quick brainstorm to kind of get the juices flowing. So let's do one of those real quick. Um, let's let's kind of gauge where students are at. Uh, what landmarks in the United States have you visited? And we're going to have students contribute a max of two times with text, and we want to show students display names. So I have the opportunity to turn on or off the display names for anonymity, but I'm okay with showing the names for today. So we're going to hit next. We're going to have a nice classic background. And now I have my shout it out at the beginning of the lesson to generate the, the brainstorming. Okay, so I'm going to hit finish editing. And now I'm back on my Lumio library. I am going to start this lesson now as if I were delivering it to students. And if you would like, you can join my lesson. I'm going to pop out these talking heads, these little uh, heads and shoulders here. And uh, this arrow will give me um, the hellosmart.com class ID where students can join. So if you go to on a, a separate browser, um, hellosmart.com and enter in the class code 413681, you guys will be in my lesson as if you were a student. So I'll give people a second to join. With this class code, you guys are going to join as guests, but your students would join with their school Google credentials. And that way they can't name themselves. And we know high schoolers and middle schoolers um, love to take it take it to the next level and join as like Taylor Swift or something. Um, so join as a guest for today, but students would join as, as with their Google credentials. The link for that Hello Smart is also in our student resources bookmarks that we put on all of the kiddos Chromebooks and then also in Clever. So we have that link in several places to make it as easy as possible. Great call out.
All right, I don't know exactly how many people we have on, but we're going to get started if that's okay with you. Um, maybe we can put that 413681 in the chat if people still need it again. Okay, so here's our first page. And again, what I really like about Lumio is students could have this on their Chromebook as a visual reinforcement. Anything that I do to these pages, you will see on your screen. So if I need to add some additional notes, I can, and that those um, ink that should show up on your screen as well. All right, here is that first shout it out. I'm going to hit start for class, and you guys are going to tell me, have you ever visited any landmarks in the United States? You should get a little text box. Nice, we got Niagara Falls. And Statue of Liberty, everything in Washington. Good, good, good. Okay. Nice. So these pop in and imagine there's, you know, 25 or 30 uh, responses on the screen. What a great way to hear from everybody quickly, right? Everybody has to contribute. Everybody has to give their thoughts. Maybe this is a social emotional check-in. Maybe it's a, who was your favorite character in the novel that we just finished? Maybe it's what answer did you get for number 12 um, on your on your worksheet? And everybody has to share. Everybody gets an opportunity to respond. And you, as a teacher, all of this will be saving to this file. You can go back and give a participa participation grade um, or score for this activity because it's always saving back to this file. So you, again, you can turn on and off those, those names um, to make uh, it anonymous if you want. You can group them or move them. There is a little trash can tool. If something is inappropriate, you can pop that in the trash can to get it off the screen. So love, shout it out. All right, the next lesson objective is uh, where we put that recording. So if you press that little play button, you'd hear my voice. And then we had just, again, a blank teaching page. Again, I could grab my tool, use my highlighter. We can kind of read through here. I can circle different things with my pen. Um, I could add some text on the fly as the teacher. And you will see all that on your screen as well. There's our video. If we press play, everybody could watch that either together or put some headphones on and have everybody watch that independently. All right, here is another static page where we didn't do anything. Um, but if I wanted to turn this page into something on the fly, I can come over here to my uh, three lines, my little hamburger menu, and I can mid-lesson edit do something to this page, and then with no time lost, I can return back to my lesson. So if you forget to do anything and you need to go back to editing mode, it takes literally two seconds. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and complete that match them up activity that I made where we're matching our landmark to the city and state. So you're going to drag um, the landmark to the circle on the left and then find the, the city on the right. And then it will give them that instant feedback. On my side as the teacher, I can see my, my dashboard, it gives me student progress. So I can see one person is still in progress and one person has completed this activity. I can drill down even further and show the class results. So um, we have a class average of four out of four with 22, 22 seconds spent on the activity. I can see the top five most incorrect and the top five most correct answers. So I get some insight and some data into their learning. And then I can drill down even further, probably wouldn't show this on our uh, smart board, but I can see Ryan, he finished in 16 seconds. He got four out of four. And Chelsea, very good. You know your landmarks. Good job, you guys. So I can see individual student progress as well. So this is my activity dashboard that I get with a lot of these games. Um, so check those out. 
here is our handout where we were using the pen tool to circle the different landmarks in DC. So go ahead and take a second to do that, Ryan and Chelsea. And I'm going to watch your progress. So I'm going to open up Ryan's worksheet and kind of just watch him as he goes. So he grabbed the pen tool. He circled our capital. So I can give Ryan some feedback. Maybe I want to give him a gold star because he really knows his landmarks. Good job. I could give him some written feedback. Good. Oh, he's even matching. Ugh, nice work. Um, and I can look over at Chelsea as well. She's doing great. So I could give her some um, written feedback here. Nice work. And they will only see that on her page. So again, this is learning artifacts that are, oh, Ryan even found the done button. Nice job, Ryan. Um, so he signaled to me that he was done and I got a little green check mark here. Wonderful, Chelsea, good. So I really like the handout feature because again, these are papers that are all digital that I no longer have to keep or save or take home. They always are gonna be in this file if I wanna revisit it at parent-teacher conferences and pull up a learning artifact for parents to view, or again, just give a grade or a participation points, that's fine too. All right, the group workspace was very similar, except as the teacher, I need to set this up. So pretend we have, you know, 25 students in the class and we can do, you know, as many teams as we need. Ryan's on team one, Chelsea's on team two. I'm going to hit start. Again, you guys can take your pen, match up those landmarks to the city. And I, as the teacher, can click into the different team workspaces and see how they're progressing. Nice. All right. For time's sake, we have about three minutes left, and I did want to get to our monster quiz. So I'm going to skip through here. Um, I did want to note for my secondary teachers that we can turn on what's called student pacing. So currently, I'm in teacher pacing, whereas I move you move. Whatever I'm showing, you're seeing. I have all the power and control. I do have the option to put on student pacing, and then the students can advance through the slides by themselves. So maybe you're teaching for the first 10, 15 minutes, and then you have activities that reinforce um, the learning at the end, and then students can progress through that at their own pace. All right, so Monster Quiz is so fun. And again, the um, the Secondary students are not above this, so I promise the little monsters, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not above the little cartoons. I'm going to hit start for class. This is a game where speed and accuracy matter, so I would divide you guys up into teams, and we'll do two teams, so Ryan versus Chelsea. The goal is to break these little monsters out of their shells the fastest by answering questions correctly. The students will absolutely love this. And if you're going to start anywhere, I would say start with a monster quiz. So teach how you normally would say at the end of class, we're going to do a monster quiz. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. You will see students stay very, very engaged. Um, so we're going to hit start and I'm going to let you go ahead and answer some of those questions on your mark, get set, go. And we'll turn on, uh, let's see if our sound Neck and neck. I was a math and science teacher for the record. Oh, no. 
Nice. Ryan, you're the winner. All right. Just for time's sake, I'm going to hit end. I missed the and same question three times. Oh, no. The animal one, I had no idea. So we can review um, as a class. So um, we can look at, um, you know, Nicholas Cage was not on Mount Rushmore. Good job. You guys both got that one right. So I have a little pie chart on the left that shows me how many students got it right or wrong. Um, and then we've got the very dangerous rock squirrel in the Grand Canyon. If you didn't know, it will bite you. Um, so that is that. So that lesson, super fun. I'm going to go ahead and hit end. And we are back in our Lumio library. I know I'm one minute over, but I do want to take two seconds to kind of show you guys this Lumio uh, homepage. So if I want to take this Landmarks lesson and make a copy, I would use my three dots here. And I would hit duplicate. So that will give me another copy where I can rename period one landmarks, period two landmarks for the rest of my students that I teach. Uh, if I teach multiple groups of students in one day, I can also take the share link for that and I can give it to a co-teacher with this teacher share link. And I can also give it to a student with a student share link. So if I wanted the students to do that lesson asynchronously, I would use this copy button to put it into my Google Classroom as an asynchronous assignment. Um, I also have my Lumio library up here at the top. These are pre-created lessons and templates by created by our um, developers. So they are featured content for like the seasons and the holidays at the top. But then we come down and we see tons and tons of different collections, different topics, reading, writing, multiplication, um, graphic organizers, something for everyone, footsteps in history, uh, different graphic organizers and templates. Um, so much good stuff in here, but you can also search by grade or subject area. Um, if you want to do that as well. Pop back over here to my library. Um, again, your class code will never change. It will always be those same six digit number. So you'll want to get in the habit of having students leave your lesson so that they are, you don't have period one students in period two. Um, and they just leave by going to the exit, the uh, little door at the top. I think it's maybe three lines and then it just says leave lesson and that will help them exit the lesson so that they, they, they don't appear in the next period. Um, I think we covered a lot today very quickly. Again, happy to answer any questions in our last five minutes. Um, any questions uh, that came to mind as I was presenting? Ryan, did we answer your question about making a copy? Yep. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks, Anna. We're we're glad to have you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. You're so very.